Hey guys and welcome to Top Channel 1 on 1 and today we're going to be making this animation that was inspired from an ad I saw on Pinterest. I want to do a lot of these um, but uh, you know YouTube doesn't like sending out notifications for tutorials anymore. You can see some of the videos are not performing very well. So we're going to be doing it the old fashioned way by just sending you guys emails and uh, if you want you can check out the tutorial including free assets and add-ons plus project files just subscribe to the newsletter i'll be sending out the first newsletter including this project file maybe in a day anyway let's jump into the tutorial i modeled this seed a very simple shape like this and then i added some divisions and then some in the displacement to be this shape i set up a particle system using geometry nodes this is my setup uh, so all i did is uh, start with a mesh like this uh, this is actually the same emitter i'm using for the fluid and uh, distributed a bunch of particles like that and then added a noise because these particles were distributed on a mesh which already has normals if you just use the normal directly into the offset you can push these particles out and uh, if you add a scale you can control how far they go uh, if you add some randomness you can randomize them to either go in the negative or positive direction because here you can see they're just going in one direction uh, you can change them to go in the opposite direction here using a randomness you can either push them out or push them back and uh, using a scale you can control how much that happens and uh, then from there i instanced the bin i made it as the instance and uh, added some random rotation in blender 5 there is a random rotation node so you don't have to set it up yourself so you just search for random rotation and you can plug it directly into the rotation of uh, the instances and uh, we get something like this now you don't have uh, an option to control the scale or the influence of the random rotation so what i did was add a scale option uh, to set them to zero or increase uh, their rotation like that. The, the rotation is also animated and the way I did that is by just adding the current frame to the rotation. So basically what I did was just use a vector math with the operation add and uh, the time node basically to add to the to that and I can see now you get that random rotation. You can keyframe the scale to increase how spread they are and uh, the rotation as well so i keyframe those properties and uh, to get that now next up let's take a look at the shell uh, which is basically a copy of the emitter i basically just copied over the entire geometry nodes up to with the random rotation and everything i uh, realized the geometry and uh, converted this into an sdf grid that looks like that and then converted the grid into a mesh that gives me that uh, you can control the voxel and uh, bandwidth to get a shape that is closer to the bin set shade smooth and baked uh, because remember the bins have this animation because i don't want this to be animated it's not necessary to be animated uh, when we are creating the shell so i ended up with this and uh, gave it a material and i needed the shell to have an inside and an outside so i shrink this so that is smaller than the shell i flip the faces and join this to have a shell with a solid surface you need to flip the faces uh, if you want to uh, uh, use booleans to cut it into two and expose the inside and uh, that's what i did here uh, first of all let me show you the separated part which would be this uh, you can see the inside and uh, so after joining them here I create a grid like this, subdivide it and uh, extrude it to give it some thickness because uh, we're going to use booleans and uh, they usually need some thickness. You can see how this is thick and convert the geometry into an instance because I wanted to randomize the rotation and I got this, gave it a material and uh, this is going to appear in the, in the shell and then use it as a cutter here. I can still update this, update the rotation I just change the seed then i split the two pieces into instances because i want to recenter their rotations right now their rotations are all in the original position so this for each zone is to make sure that uh, i center the object when you enter this for each loop i'm running this for each loop on every instance so here i'm just realizing this recentering it and I'm converting it back to the instance so that I can offset it using the original position. All of this is just to make sure that the pivot point of each piece is in this is in its center. And now that way I can easily rotate them 
as I want. And in fact, you can see how each of these are, are rotated. If I didn't do this step, each instance would be rotated at the center of the object instead of at its own center. Then I set up this splitting animation, which pushes these two apart. So you can see, just gives us that. It's a simple animation. Uh, since these two are instances, you can just scale their position and uh, they will, it, that will push them apart from each other, giving us this split. I'm also animating the rotation uh, so that we start out at zero and then increase the rotation a bit. Uh, so we have uh, that. Now, next up is to add these extra particles that break off. And uh, the way I set those up, after the animation and everything, I go in and delete the inner faces because you can see we have the inner shell, that white uh, part. Uh, so I delete the inner faces using the material index. Since I, I set, I gave it a material here when we are creating the shell. Come in here, split it or delete the inner shell. And all I need is these boundary edges because I want to create these particles near are the edges there. So I delete the inner shell and then delete all the edges except the boundary edges. And to do this, I use the face neighbor. So any edge that has more than one face uh, gets deleted. So that's, that's everything other than these boundary edges because they only have one face. Then I realize the geometry and then turn it into a curve and then curve to points and then I uh, randomize the points using uh, some random some randomization and then use that to instance these pieces uh, which I created from a circle uh, with a set position to distort the shape a bit just like that using a noise texture and uh, then set the material and then extrude I to have something like this. You can see this is also has two different materials. We instance them here. And uh, all of these updates when you update the Boolean. So if I change the seed to cut in a different way, uh, which I did around, around here, you can see how I can easily adjust. And uh, since the original instancer is animated, the particles will also follow that animation. So I also animate their visibility, their scale and visibility, so that they only show after this splits. And uh, I also have this switch node to switch out the original mesh before it's structured and after, I think here. So you see the particles and we get that split. The whole animation is done in geometry nodes. Then we have the fluid. All you have to do is set up a domain to get the slow motion. To get this, the slow motion, you can change the time scale. So you can see here, it's playing normal at a scale, a time scale of one. And then I slow, I speed it up fast to a time scale of four, and then speed slow it down to 0 0.01, basically giving me that super slow motion like that and uh, all the water or the liquid is emitted from the original mesh we have uh, which is this this is our emitter and uh, it's a fluid type flow the only setting that i changed here is setting it to use planner because it's it doesn't have any thickness and uh, most of the settings the other settings are carried with the domain uh, again you can check the project files if you want to see all my settings all the settings i used the other thing I did is uh, add in some turbulence. I also removed switched off the gravity. So if you go back to the domain, you will see that uh, gravity is turned off uh, so that the fluid can stay floating in the air like that. Yeah, the other thing I was saying was the turbulence. I animated it to be 0.5, uh, the strength to be 0.5 in the beginning, and uh, then turned off after flame, tr flame tore off so that the fluid is not further influence. You can see that uh, we have a timing issue here. Uh, this is the fluid simulation and you can see it. the timing is a bit off. So rather than going back and simulate again, I exported the domain, the domain mesh as an alembic file. So if you go under, if you select the domain, go under file, export alembic, selected only. You can export the whole simulated fluid 
and uh, I hide everything in the backup and I re-import this as an Alembic file. I can see here, you go on a file, import Alembic so that you don't have to rerun the simulation. And the great thing about using Alembic files is that now you can control the timing. So, so I, here, this allows me to, to offset or change the timing of the animation so that, it's, so that it matches with the rest of uh, the animation. Just like that. And, and uh, the rest is just simply lighting and uh, that's it.